We have very big news coming out of both Ukraine and also down in the Middle East. Specifically inside of Ukraine, we are hearing that in occupied Crimea, one of Russia's largest oil depots is currently still burning to the ground after an entire day of that fire raging. The Russian fire department is not able to put it out and currently it's a very large crisis down in Crimea as Russia is losing that entire facility. We're also hearing another very big story that North Korean soldiers might actually be on the ground fighting right now on the front lines inside of Ukraine on Russia's behalf. According to the South Korean government. So that's also a massive story. And meanwhile, down in the Middle East, we're hearing that Hezbollah has fired another large salvo of rockets at Israel. And also we're hearing explosions near Isfahan in Iran, which is, of course, near Iran's nuclear program. So we have some very big news to cover today. And to jump into our first story, we have one from Jason J. Smart. And we're seeing here that in a Russian-occupied Feodosia in Crimea, a state of emergency has been introduced. And in the city, the largest oil depot on the peninsula in terms of transshipment of petroleum products is is on fire and right here you can see in this photograph there is a massive fire right here right here in the distance you can see one large stack of smoke and also another one as well this is the russian oil depot in crimea and this actually caught fire yesterday so this is something that's been happening over 24 hours at least and we can see right there that it was a very large fire and moving on to our next post here which goes to null reports we have more details as to how this entire operation ended up catching fire like this and apparently it was attacked by two missiles and like i said the firefighters are now struggling to put down the fire and three people were reported injured and at the moment it's known that five fuel tanks were damaged and also two were destroyed but we expect that number to grow even more because the russian fire department can't put this fire out and it looks like the entire facility is going to go up in blazes but moving on to our next post here we now have one from status six military and conflict news and like i said the fire is still burning and right here we can see that it continues to burn after the ukrainian strikes in the early hours of yesterday on october the 7th and in this video right here we're about to watch you can see a huge cloud of thick black smoke still rising over the area absolutely polluting the occupied crimean territory right now so let's take a look at the video and see the extent of this damage so here you can see a Russian driving down the road. That is a humongous cloud of smoke right there. Also, you can see right above that building top over here, the white building right in the right corner of the screen, you can see there is still a very large fire raging right there at the facility, and it is out of control. So indeed, it looks like the facility might end up being a total loss for the Russians, which would, of course, be a very big uh, win for Ukraine after attacking it with two Ukrainian missiles. So very good to see. But that is insane, man. With that, we're jumping to our next post here, and we... Okay, so first of all, like soon they have some kind of defenses, especially after now, to their key assets like that. Or is it like too hard to defend? I don't know about that. But I don't know, like soon Russia, you know, put their like anti-air defenses and things like that around that place and any place like that was instrumental just to defend against missiles and things. Because that, that's what you think in the modern world, right? Whenever major power comes to war, you think like, okay, there's going to be many defenses of different things anti-air defense anti-missile defense right all that shit right let's say there's somebody like iran or something declare wars against america and try to attack it you will think that there's very um, key american ports there's going to be something like uh you know ages and patriot and different type of like defense systems trying to you know like shoot back at missiles and things so it doesn't destroy it russia doesn't have something like that this is just insane of course it's going to happen 
You destroyed most of the Ukrainians in Ukraine, most of the place. That might be key. So Ukraine, Ukrainians have nothing more to lose type of way. So they're going to attack anything they can basically see as an important part, right? And this is why uh, Putin was basically telling Britain, I think, to not let Ukrainian use certain type of missile that can hit them very deep inside Russia because same, just like this, it would be problematic, right? I don't know what happened with that one, but yeah. Also have satellite images from War Translated, which show us the aftermath of that strike on that depot. And in these photos from today, this morning, plumes of smoke can be seen over the territory of Feodosia at their terminal at their ports. So let's take a look here. And in the first image right here, you see there's the massive fire raging right here, and it is covering their terminals right here in the same area in Crimea. So that is going to cause more issues, secondary issues with their shipping and things like that. And we can see that in that first photograph. And here in the second one, you can actually see the fire itself at the depot so just like we saw before with another depot that caught fire inside of mainland russia once these get going really strong it's really hard to stop them and this one is at that point of no return in my opinion and i think we're going to see much more destruction so we'll probably be hearing a lot more about this fire in the coming days but with that we're jumping into our next post here which goes to null reports and honestly this is probably our biggest story of the day we are getting groundbreaking news that north korea is likely already biggest mahusi this is true this will shake everything up Right? This, will, this will be a big blow to Russia, I think. Because now anybody else can justify entering Ukraine war, which they might be like itching to do that anyway. Right? Uh, you know, like they, they might have looking for loopholes and anything they can use to, oh, by the way, we are entering Ukraine. Now they have it, if this turns out to be true. Why did you ask North Korean to help? Now we're going to help Ukraine as well. Why did you do that type of way? I don't know sending its military to Ukraine to assist Russia, according to South Korea's defense minister, Kim Jong-un. And also, the South Korean defense minister said that he believes there have been injuries and fatalities among North Korean troops already inside of Ukraine. So, this is groundbreaking news right here, because we had heard about a month or so back that North Korea did come to a uh, defense pact with Russia. See, that's the thing. I've assumed that for a long time. Like, I get it, all this news and everything, all that you get. But this is war times, right? You can't get that much info anyway because war is actually happening right now. It will take multiple years before we can get real clear picture of what actually happened. But right? we're just getting like top, top of the thing, right? Uh, I don't know. It is, uh, there must be a lot of things happening there, like other countries involved actually on the ground as well, hidden somehow because people are not stupid. But militaries and agencies are not stupid. They know how to do things. Right, uh, with some kind of a loophole here and there, they might actually be operating right now. That's all I always assume, right? It can't be just Ukraine and Russia, there other militaries are involved as well. If this turns out to be true, it would be just like one of those things like, okay, we just assume this was happening, it is happening type of way, right? I always assume, like, okay, uh, is any other European country or American troops, even at small numbers, actually fighting in Ukraine, right? Of course, there's not going to be information there because, like I said, militaries know how to hide things. From Russian side, yeah, there's going to be like Iran, North Korea, somebody must be involved. So North Korea being involved, if that comes out, yeah, they'll be like, yeah, we knew that. Apparently there's proof now. In exchange for nuclear technology, North Korea is going to provide military soldiers to fight inside of Ukraine. We never got final confirmation on that, but now we're hearing from South Korea, which they have very good intelligence on the North. We are hearing that they have sent people to uh, Ukraine already, and they're currently getting injured and also dying on the front lines for Russia. So if this is indeed true, this is very bad news right here, because that means North Korea is now an active participant in the war. And we do know that North Korea has been sending artillery shells to Russia in mass, and we've also heard of many many malfunctions with those artillery shells because they're defective but once again north korea is getting very involved in this conflict and it looks like it could be ramping up as we speak so we'll be keeping a sharp eye on this one right here and we'll probably talk about this more on tonight's stream as well this is a very big story but moving on here to our next one we have a article from nexta and we're learning that france is going to provide ukraine with mirage 2000 fighter jets that's very good news as well because of course ukraine did just get the f-16 jets and now they're possibly going to get the mirage 2000 fighter jets as well from france and this was announced by the French defense minister, and according to him, the delivery is scheduled for the first quarter of 2025, and the aircraft will be equipped with the new technology. So, like I said, very good news right here. More fighter jets for Ukraine is just what they need, because right now, the war is in a bit of a stalemate, and they do need to break that somehow. So, more fighter jets may be what they need to break that stalemate. But Is it in a stalemate, though? Like, I get it's progressive, it's not happening that much, but... They will attack Kursk, so that's not really stalemate, is it? Now they're trying, Russia is trying to take back. 
While Ukraine is trying to take Kursk, yeah, southern Ukraine in Donbas, Russian troops have been advancing. I saw the King's and General video. Like, they've been advancing because obviously a lot of focus is in Kursk right now. So people are trying out different strategy, strategies and battle plans. Still, media is slow, but that's, yeah, it's, war has been slow for a long time now, right? So, of course, major breakthroughs is going to be hard, but yeah. Anyways, moving on here to our next post, we're going to actually switch over to the Middle Eastern news uh, at this point in the video because we have some very big news coming out, which is very disturbing about things happening over there. And in this post from Visegrad24, we can see that just a couple of hours ago, Hezbollah fired at least 100 rockets toward the cities of Haifa and Acre in northern Israel. And the Iron Dome defense system, of course, was hard at work. Okay, is this before? This is five days ago. Five days ago. So this, this video was posted. So is this before Israel entered Hezbollah or after? Uh, you know, uh, Lebanon? Lebanon, yeah. Attacked, you know, like Hezbollah. Because this could be the reason why they enter, right? Like, I don't know. Somebody comment down. But yeah, this is just insane. They killed a lot of, like, command structure of Hezbollah, leader as well. So I don't know how all that's working right now in today, but yeah taking these rockets out of the sky. So let's take a look at the video here and see the extent of the attack. So as we can see in this video right here, there are white pieces of smoke right here all in the sky. That indicates interceptions by the Iron Dome of these rockets. And once again, Hezbollah is launching these large attacks on Israel pretty much every day at this point. But Israel is also returning fire in a much bigger way by assassinating tons of members of Hezbollah and also other proxy groups of Iran. They are being assassinated. This is still so surreal to me. Look at those buildings. It looks like modern sculpture, infrastructure, signs of modern society, let's just say. I don't know how to say more. Western style world. Rich world. I don't know how else to say that, right? I don't know if you can justifiably say Western world anymore because like in China, you know, cities are like that, like Dubai and things like that. Basically rich modern cities, right? Just seeing sculpture type buildings like that, like properly architectured building and things. And you see this missiles coming and you're like iron dome working it feels weird isn't it like okay look at look at the luxury we live in look at the things we live in by, by the way we are also war zone that's just weird that, that was also the case with like i'm um, kiev right in ukraine that city was also like that like shining and everything and post-war yeah things are kind of fucked it's so surreal assassinated every single day and also if, for example in Lebanon places are being leveled and we also have footage of that in just a moment Israel has kept leveling of places in Lebanon where Hezbollah is hiding out but as you can see here there are large pieces of smoke in the sky because there are large attacks happening on Haifa and you can see even the arc here of one of those interceptor missiles heading toward the rocket so it is going down once again in Israel's major cities but moving on here to our next post so we have another one from Nexta and we do have some more footage here of this attack so let's take a look so right here you see there goes one of those interceptors right up there right next to the honda dealership uh what a what a place to be at a time like this next to a honda dealership but there goes <laughs> one does like our car so reliable they can't even weather a missile strike there you go there you go that's that, that's what we are do people in israel like have bunkers and shit because if i were leaving there the first thing i would build is a fucking bunker oh by the way all missiles are coming all right do shit and just go down in the bunker because all this building and all these things like any missiles that get through can hit you. That's that's a concept here, right? It's like if you go through a place, there's some kind of like a something is happening, riot or something. People are throwing big ass rocks, and you just walk in the middle of them. Like, Everything's fine. Yeah, rock can hit you. This is similar to that. A missile can hit you. It's like I get it. What you're gonna do? You live there, but build a I don't know, less basement or something. You know, like how in America people do like tornado proof basements and shit. Missile proof basements. Why not? the rocket flying through the sky and it is going to hit those Hezbollah rockets so once again just more video evidence of the size of the attack over 100 plus rockets and once again it's a very big one but Israel is responding but moving on here to our next post we have one from Visegrad 24 and this is also another very large story as well we are currently hearing reports of explosions being heard near the Isfahan nuclear facility in Iran and also as we can see in this photo right here something is on fire near the location of that facility which is very concerning because of course we don't know the extent of Iran's nuclear capabilities. We don't know how far they've gotten with their research. So that leaves the United States and also our partners in limbo because we don't know exactly how to respond to this if we don't know the exact... Yeah, you don't know. I'm pretty sure in the U.S. certain people do know, right? I saw the video of like how Russians uh, and their, their spy agencies 
infiltrate a Ukrainian government and vice versa, Ukrainian spy agencies or whatever, like, or CIA or whatever, like infiltrated Soviet Union, Russia back then, how that was all working, how they needed to structure everything. Even today, that might be the case. This makes me think like CIA and many other agencies, right? Even, uh, you know, like Israeli, uh, you know, spies and things like that. They must have some people there hidden trying to monitor shit. No way they don't know, right? They must know if things are very, you know, improving or not. And if things go out of hand, the Top Gun Maverick level shit would happen. We're like, oh, we have a special mission for you. We need to destroy this target and go away before the like, SAMs can get activated or some shit like that. Something like that, right? US is known to do operations like that. Look at how that, uh, you know, took out uh, uh, Bin Laden basically before anybody even noticed, right? And there is just something people know or they let you know, right? There must be a lot of operation. I mean, nobody knows or will ever know blacklisted until multiple decades go by. Oh, by the way, we also did that. So I'm pretty sure if they don't want it now, they make some iron never gets nuclear capabilities type of way. Exact state of their nuclear program. So we are seeing here a big fire. And also we heard of a very big earthquake in Isfahan yesterday as well, with some speculating maybe that was an underground nuclear test being conducted by the Iranian regime. That could certainly be the case, but right now we really don't know for certain because we don't have evidence of that. But as you can see, a large fire here in Isfahan, which is very concerning. But with that, we're moving on to our next post, which goes to the Mossad commentary. And we're also seeing, like I said earlier, a large non-stop heavy attacks on the Lebanese border towns by Israel. Israel on these Hezbollah positions. So let's take a look. So as you can see right here, a view of the border and dang, there's like a nuclear style explosion out here in the distance with a not massive shockwave attached to it. And it looks like Israel. Yeah, it's not nuclear style, but yeah, it's, it's devastating. People really don't understand until they live there, like what a missile strike is. And you, every time a camera, like high quality camera captures that, it will like adjust exposure and things and you will not get the full picture of what it's supposed to be that the flash the thumpness of things right the explosion and all that like shock waves yeah that's terrifying shit just one missile imagine like surrounded by missiles all the time now, obviously this has some big ass missiles some small one why was it moab and shit no not moab probably that's even more devastating that's like the biggest without nuke that's the biggest missiles right some shit like that but yeah, any missiles is like, yeah, like hellfires and things that would have like massive explosions, right? Nuke, <laughs> even the small nuke that you would know that's a nuke, right? Your people who piss their parents, half of the people who die by just looking at a heart attack or some shit in modern world. I'm sure of that, right? At least half of them would get hospitalized because of some PTSD or something, right? If they're, if they're not immediate vicinity of that. If you're immediate vicinity of that, you're probably dead by radiation brought out one of those famous 2,000 pound bombs or even something maybe larger on whatever this target was that, that was being hit out here in the distance. So absolutely crazy. Like, well, like I've said in the last video I made, the attacks by Israel that they launch are out of this world in proportion. Uh, they're very large. Like Israel does nothing small. Yeah, I'll probably have to blur things out here, right? Because YouTube is like, no, 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 you can't do that. Why are you showing the actual... YouTube thinks like I'm actually going there with a webcam showing the real events or something whenever something like this happens, right? So I, I don't know how Enforcer puts videos like this and how his videos are not blurred. I don't know. Is that why like YouTube doesn't recommend me his videos or something? I don't know. Small, they do everything big and they're doing it big once again right here. And that should make the Hezbollah forces pretty fearful uh, with attacks like that happening. But with that, we're jumping into our next post and this one goes to Apex News. And another big question which we've been wondering for quite some time is when Israel finally does respond to Iran's very large massive attack which happened about a few days ago, almost a week ago actually, uh, what is Israel going to Is that already happened? Because if Israel directly response to Iran like that, like proper like jets and things. I think that would be big enough news, right? Like then Iran will have to do the same thing, this and that, because you think like missile attack. Yeah, they've been doing missile attacks. What you're talking about? But missile, somehow people see it as differently. Oh, by the way, it's just missile attack. When you actually put the jets there or put troops actually focused on certain things, special operations, this is when like, oh, by the way, shit is going down going to do in response to that? Are they going to strike those military targets or are they going to go strike Iran's nuclear program like many people have been asking for? So right now we're still in limbo about that, but we are getting some behind the scenes reporting that Israel is not expected to attack Iran's nuclear program, but rather they plan to focus on various kinds of military bases and also intelligence sites, according to various sources from the J Post. So take this for what you will. It is, of course, somewhat speculation because Israel could end up striking these nuclear uh, sites. And in my honest opinion, 
opinion. This is just from my assessment. I think now would be the probably the opportune time to hit these things because. Yeah, but the reason Israel is not expected to attack that because probably U.S. told them to not do that. There's probably a grander plan there. People need to realize that Israel works with the U.S. somewhat because well, what else they're gonna do, right? So if U.S. says like or like U.S. agency says like okay, we have plans for these things, like stay away from that. That must be the reason, right? No way there's anything else. So yeah, but there you go. Yeah, the North Korean thing is the biggest news. I'm pretty sure nobody's going to find out any details about that because they're going to make sure of that. But yeah, this is the thing I, you know, like I was assuming for a long time by now. Other countries must be on the ground one way or another, right? And uh, yeah, it just makes sense, right? Like people think like we can get news of anything. Not really, right? A lot of things must be hidden. They know how to do that, right? Especially when the war is go you know, going on and that's like literally a battlefield where you can't get much out of that anyway. Yeah, it's gonna be the case. Alright, well, uh, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.